I'm ready and not before. Until next time. Woo! Here we go. Okay, we did it. The bonus is complete. 170. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm here to show you guys a really awesome skeleton mage necromancer build. It's actually the build that I played last week and a few of you guys wanted to know the build guide for it. So I've got it for you guys today. So uh, let's go ahead and hop right into like kind of how the gameplay works. But if this is your first time playing Path of Exile, this is an excellent league starter. And also check the pinned comment if this is your first time playing because I'm gonna have a full entire walkthrough uh, playthrough guide that no matter how brand new you are to Path of Exile, I'll be doing everything from start to finish for all of the acts. That way, no matter what, you will be able to get your character up and running because Path of Exile is kind of a difficult game. So check the pin comment as soon as the league starts. I will have like a league starter guide that's a full walkthrough. I will hold your hand all the way through. So starting right off, in terms of the play style, you can level this up several different ways, but you won't be able to use your skeleton mages until you get a very specific jewel. So leveling up with absolution or zombies or uh, these little flaming skulls, you can do a lot of different things to level this character up. But just as a heads up, you cannot just start off at very low level and play skeleton mages because you require a very specific jewel called dead reckoning, but it's a very, very cheap jewel. The very first day, it can be expensive because there's a lot of people that will be playing a necromancer doing skeleton mages because this build is absolutely amazing. Um, but it'll go cheap. Don't worry. Just wait a couple days uh, at the start of the league. Yeah, this is something that you will definitely have to have to play skeleton mages because, well, without it, you can't summon the skeleton mages. Um, and there's another... Uh, uh, cluster jewel that you will definitely want to have technically you can play without it but i do not recommend it all you really need is something that has blessed rebirth which has the uh, very specific thing where minions created recently cannot be damaged so the skeleton mages are actually a very weak monster they die super fast but if they can't be damaged recently when they are summoned and you're going to be summoning them quite often it's going to make it so they're basically immune to damage for a few seconds and then the next pack that you summon because you're going to want to resummon because you're going to want to use a minion skill to actually to give yourself a damage buff uh basically that's the gist of like the things that are absolutely required for this build to kind of function properly uh, there's basically just two items now there is a third item called flesh crafter that is very good however with the new league mechanic of slamming two different pieces of armor together this could actually be something that may be replaced for like the best in slot but for the most part flesh crafter is excellent uh but it's not something i would say is absolutely required because there's technically some room for leniency with uh potentially even better gear uh that uh could be coming out in the next league but pretty much you should be able to run this perfectly fine all the gameplay by the way that you guys are seeing i cleared out all 117 maps we did the fear we did every single thing that you could want to do in path of exile uh last season uh you will be able to do with this build with exactly what you're seeing but there could be like a pretty big upgrade because again slamming two pieces of uh you know i wonder if you could do double influence and then slam them together it probably won't work but there could be some really insane mixes with uh this new like sentinel crafting system which we don't know about yet because i'm recording this uh before the league comes out but i will update you guys if that is something that is going to be better but in terms of the gameplay, let's talk about the gameplay, how it works. So basically, we're using Frostblink to just move around the map. That's the only other ability that you really need to cast on a consistent basis because that's just your mobility. So we're casting Frostblink just to move around really, really fast. And then what we're doing is we're summoning our skeletons. The rest of the skills don't really get activated other than your Vol Summon Skeletons, which is only really utilized on bosses. By the way, all the gameplay you guys are seeing is all in one take. It's no cuts. Just so I can show you guys like how tanky the build is. Uh, because I know with some content creators, because uh, I have friends that try to play Path of Exile 2, they're like, I tried this build, didn't work out, I'm having survivability issues. This build is ultra tanky, it clears fights really, really fast, uh, very respectable. It just takes a while to get uh, the skeleton mages, like, is in terms of like, it's not an expensive item, it's just you won't be able to get it super early on because it's an item that needs to actually, like, you need to drop or trade for it. But pretty much there's nothing that's absolutely required other than that jewel. Uh, but in terms of the gameplay, all you're doing is you're summoning your skeletons, and you can see how aggressive I'm playing. With some people with summoner builds, they like to sit back, they summon, and they wait. I'm just going right into things. That's why I like Frostblink so much. Uh, but you can do Frostblink or Flame Dash. It doesn't really matter too much. But um, all we're that's all we're doing. It's one of the easiest gameplay uh, playstyles to actually play. We actually have a lot of things 
on auto cast. Now, uh, some of the gems will matter for the zones that you put them in, but let's go and actually explain the pieces of gear that you're looking to try to get. And keep in mind, you don't have to have everything exactly like I have. It's just, uh, this is the things that I happen to have. You can actually get this build up a little bit higher by getting um, the boots that will actually uh, apply a condition so you're going to have higher crit on boots for your animate guardians. So there's a little bit more min-maxing uh, on this build that you can do. You could also do unnerve on your gloves uh, to get even more damage. So this build can still scale definitely a little bit further here, but this is just the way I like to play it and it was fast. And like I said, I did everything last league and it was a blast to play. So starting right off, let's just go over all the pieces of gear they're kind of looking forward to getting. And of course, if you're looking for like the passive tree and the POB, that will all be down below in the description box. Just check that out. But I'll kind of like scroll over it just give someone just, just wants to use the YouTube video. I'll leave it here, but I won't. Okay, they do show the masteries. That's good. Uh, but uh, yeah, the POB and everything will be linked because I know there's some things that like don't actually show in like the official website. I don't know why the, they still don't have the cluster drill thing, but again, you only need the Blessed Rebirth. That's the only thing that's important. And then also, I really highly recommend getting a jewel that says uh, Corrupted Blood Can't Be Inflicted on You. If you get life, extra minion damage, uh, that's cool too, but Basically, you just want Corrupted Blood can't be inflicted on it. I know you can get it on the uh, passive tree. There's like a way you can get it, but I'd rather save the passive nodes. But that's basically the tree. Uh, again, I will have that pinned down below because most people just kind of want to know like your pieces of gear and stuff. And I also mentioned some of the other alternate quality gems too. Um, basically, with the Animate Garden, you can get the alternate quality to get uh, increased maximum minion life. But I'll mention the other things that may not be listed on like the website that I can actually link because some of the stuff doesn't link properly depending on if you want to use POB or not because I know there's a lot of people that may not want to download Path of Building, which is an excellent tool and I highly recommend it, but there's always newer people to Path of Exile. So first off, uh, let's go ahead and go over the wand. Now, again, some of these things, you're, you're going to be acquiring better pieces of gear as you progress. The only thing that's really important early on, I would say in terms of getting a wand, you can technically get daggers that do pretty much the same thing as well, but you want uh, plus one to all spell skill gems and plus one to level of all minion skill gems. The order is actually important to have it green, blue, and red if you want it to work properly because you want the Desecrate to actually uh, cast first. But um, the most important thing is trigger a Sogdit spell when you use a skill with an 8 second cooldown. Spells triggered with this way have 150% more cost. So I like to play this build where I just specifically am able to just move and go on super, super fast. I don't like casting curses and anything else. I mean, if you want to, yeah, you can throw on uh, like Sniper's Mark. You can throw on like, well, technically Ellie Wiggins is not going to matter because Fleshcrafter ignores the resistances. But there are other things that you might be able to do. Uh, but for the most part, I don't like casting anything. All I want to do is summon my skeletons and just move as fast as possible. Uh, by the way, all these maps, I know that the, technically this little thing is blocking it, but all these maps, by the way, are they're all going to be tier 16. We start off with the Hydra. You guys saw that we can do Maven and we can do, we can do everything. We do the Feared. We can do everything with this build. It's just, I want to do this all in like one little like take one cut just to show you guys how fast you can do uh, maps. I also have the uh, modifiers for the Atlas to have multiple bosses as well as sometimes there's like uh, uh, bodyguards on the bosses so we can get more loot. But nonetheless, the important thing that you want to focus in on is getting a trigger socketed spell when you use a skill. The skills that we're using are Desecrate, we're using Bone Offering, as well as Life Tap. So that way it doesn't matter for mana. And we're basically just able to do things super fast. So the first thing that you want, get a one that has triggered socketed spell, then you can get minion, then you can get like all spell. Like you don't have to get like this exact one. If you can get increased uh, like other minion damage, that's great, but that's going to cost you a lot more. And I'm kind of making this video a guide for most people to be able to actually obtain most of these pieces of gear so uh, that's kind of the order that you want as far as your wand goes in terms of your ring you're really just looking for anything with uh, the stats that you need uh, most of the time you will just need dexterity on something but just life I mean look at this this is not actually something super insane just minus to mana cost is great um, and then I'm got getting some damage recoup and then just some stats on it this ring definitely could be replaced and it has a sock in it this was actually kind of nice I needed it because uh, I wanted to throw in defiance banner so defiance banner could be something that you can get later down the the line doesn't need to be something you get early on because it's like the amount of armor that you have won't really exist until like later when you get determination but just uh some stats and again you may not have to put like the specific gem in uh the specific area but i just happen to put mine in here these gems do matter though because you want you want to automatically cast desecrate bone offering so you get the awesome uh, stats for the necromancer getting the percent of like a uh, bone offering effectiveness um and then in terms of our helm over here, uh, the only real important thing is to try to get something that has skeletons get some increased damage. You can get a uh, plus uh, minion skills. Uh, that would be an excellent thing to have as well. You can get a uh, reduced mana reservation efficiency uh, with some of the uh, 
newer uh, modifiers on the, uh, like, it's not influence on it, but it's like the uh, Searing Exarch, those things, that, that, that could be something to look forward to as well. Um, but the minions max life, it doesn't really matter too much with that one. Uh, what we're really, really looking forward to, I just happen to get mine with armor, because I am scaling armor as well with Determination, Defiance Banner. Uh, so just getting some life, some resistances, that's great, and then a plus one, plus one. So like a plus one level, uh, maximum uh, raise zombies and skeletons, that can be excellent. Uh, but there's nothing too special with the helmet that you really need to look for. Flesh Crafter is always gonna roll with like the same stats. The only thing that's really important with this is minions, um, where is it? Uh, one well, minions have energy shield. Their hits ignore monster elemental resistances. So this is what you want specifically uh, because that makes it so your minions won't take any damage. Well, the minions that do damage, which is your skeleton mages, um, which is actually summon skeletons or vol summon skeletons, um, they basically ignore all the res resistances. This is excellent. This is why you don't need like Ellie Weakness. But again, I do want to mention just in case, uh, you could roll like Ellie Weakness if you wanted to as like a, a curse, but not with Flesh Crafter. That's something for if the new armors that we can craft are going to be better than Flesh Crafter, then yeah, definitely. Um, but uh, pretty much just Flesh Crafter, get it six linked if you can. If not, you can definitely run a five linked. That's totally fine. So here's what I'm running I'm running Hypothermia. Um, of course, you got to have your summon skeletons. I'm running Vol Summon Skeletons um, at level 21. And I don't really believe this has any quality, but we are running an amulet that will grant us quality. We're running Spell Echo Support. Uh, we're running Pierce Support, Volley Support, and we have Awakened Minion Damage Support. But before you get Awakened, obviously just Minion Damage Support. Pretty self explanatory on that one. Um, and then for our uh, other ring over here, we have just something that has energy shield, some life, some resistances. Um, and then on top of that, I got some more damage recoup. Pretty much, uh, once you start getting towards like later in the game, you don't really need it. I like this while leveling. There's something on the tree that gives you damage recoup. I just like it so I don't have to uh, cast any potions. I just get, can just roll through content. I liked it uh, for that reason, but you definitely can get much better rings. This one isn't really a particular, again, super special. Now, for our amulet is actually really great. It's not required, but I did enchant it with death attunement, so I could basically just path out a different way. Um, so what this does, it grants us one level to all of our skill gems. Minions definitely scale with um, level quite well, so that's great for that. And then it also grants us some quality and reservation efficiency. That's actually the main reason why I like Ashes of the Star. It can be kind of expensive early on, but then it started going to like 20 chaos towards the end of the league. This thing will drop in price, but very, very excellent amulet for sure. I also uh, threw some catalyst on it for uh, the attribute modifiers because at one point I needed the dexterity. I needed a min max like three dexterity uh, because with our uh, it was uh, was it uh, volley uh, volley support gem and I needed like the dex to, to min max uh, over there. But uh, after you get like either get some dexterity on your rings or you can get it on your gloves. Our gloves are actually really excellent. I actually crafted these. Uh, so the gloves. Um, these gloves would be very expensive if you were to buy them. I crafted them. Um, I got kind of lucky. So what you're really looking to do is you buy them with specifically minions deal like increased damage. Uh, it doesn't really matter the roll. It's the, the the final one is like 20 to 22 percent. Then you can use an essence. I'll I can make a video on this actually. It's really easy to craft it. So all you look for is specifically getting. Um, either life or dexterity. I got lucky and I got life, which rolled pretty decent and dexterity, which is awesome. Um, and then it gave me some resistances. I'm way over capped in resistances anyways. Uh, but, uh, and then I was able to craft fire and chaos res on it, which was awesome. But you will roll the uh, essence of fear, I believe, and you will get uh, up to like 30% minion damage. So you can get easily 50% minion damage, uh, no matter what, as long as you buy the gloves. Uh, granted, I like uh, Goliath gauntlets because they have a uh, decent amount of armor on them. So what you're looking for is get gloves, get them with, um, if you can get them with the, the highest, 22 is great, but if it's like 20, it's whatever. It's like you get basically guaranteed 50% minion damage on these gloves and you just keep on rolling your essences and essences are relatively cheap. They're like one to two chaos for like the highest tier. Um, at least again, keep in mind prices can fluctuate as league goes on, but basically you uh, hope to get either life or dexterity and you can craft either one uh, that you don't roll on it just so you have enough dexterity for like the volley as well as the pierce support gem. Uh, and then that's how you get those gloves. 
Next up though, as far as the belt goes, I got this belt that just says cannot be ignited. That's all I really wanted it for. Just get, uh, I got one with armor and life. Uh, then I had some chaos res, which is great. And then I uh, crafted chaos and lightning res. I uh, just needed really for the chaos res, but yeah, uh, nothing too special with the belt. Uh, not too expensive if you get it without armor. Like you just look for it cannot be ignited because I wanted to be kind of ailment immune. Uh, on the Pantheon, I, I just got the one where you cannot be frozen and then you cannot be ignited with this. And there's one also where it reduced the effectiveness of shock. You can actually get that as another role, I believe, on the helmet for like the uh, searing X-Arch uh, modifiers as well, if you want to like completely be immune to shock. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, next up though, uh, we have the boots. So the boots, uh, I believe we had, we had just increased bone offering effect. You can actually roll uh, increased movement speed on them for like the searing thing. And I'd actually recommend that. Uh, the effect of bone offering is so small. I just wanted to min-max really hard on like the block, but uh, that's what we have over here. And then with the, uh, oh, actually, let me go over this. Uh, basically, it's just life resistance. There's nothing special with this actually at all. I could probably get something better. It's got 30% move speed, but again, I could probably min max. Like, obviously, yeah, you'd want Tailwind. Those are expensive though. I tried to, again, make my build guides uh, more affordable for people that aren't like super hardcore min max, but like, enough to get you through like most of the content in the game. Um, and then for our shield over here, we have the Horror Rock. Uh, so what you'll be looking for is like a Shaper. Uh, there are other influences where you can specifically get recover life on block that's all you're really looking for um this one's really good because it has socketed gems has reduced reservation efficiency um it's got some resistances which is cool but um the main stats that you want on this is recover life when you block um, and reservation efficiency. And as far as the gems that we put in here, uh, I'm running Zealotry. You're gonna run this in pretty much every build. And then Determination, and then Summon Skitter Bots is optional. If you have the reservation uh, efficiency like uh, like enough, like you have your ashes, you have it on the tree, then you can get Skitter Bots uh, or like Defiance Banner. It depends on like if you need more damage, more defenses, but that's what I would swap in and out because I am uh, running uh, in, where is it? We have Zealotry Determination, uh, where is it? It's in one of these. I think we were running, uh, oh, did it take it out? Um, there is, where is, okay. Oh, there, there's no Enlighten, okay, never mind. All right, so if you want to, you can actually run Enlighten as well. That will also help out re with reservation efficiency, but that thing is very expensive. That's like almost this whole build in terms of like the, the, the price cost for it. Uh, but here's what I'm running for the other gems. So we explained these ones over here. We explained the ones in our uh, skeleton mages. Uh, I'm running clarity specifically because I have a watcher's eye that requires it. It just it just grants us an extra. Uh, let, let's see if I can actually go through it on the tree for the watcher's eye. Um, Jewel. Oh, you know what? It might be in one of these other sockets, but basically I have it so we are immune to vulnerability and we grant extra life as um, extra ES uh, based off of our life. Uh, yeah, I, ca I can't show you here because it's kind of weird. The, the, the official website doesn't have the full thing, but in the POB, everything will be linked there. Don't worry too much about the Watcher's Eye. It's not something that you really need. If you can get like immunity to vulnerability, that's excellent. Um, or you can get like just while affected by... Um, and I define it's better. It's a determination you get in like a bunch of armor. I think it's like 2,000-ish armor. Uh, you can get that as well. The Watcher's Eye isn't super expensive. It's pretty cheap for the Necromancer. Uh, but uh, in terms of the other um, gems, we have Summon Stone Golem. That's just for life regen. Excellent. And then we have Increased Duration Support, Cast When Damage Taken, as well as Immortal Call. These three are linked. This one does not need to be linked. Um, I know people do like Molten Shell, but the way I play is I hold down one of my keys and that way I don't have to left click. If you want to, yes, Molten Shell, Vault Molten Shell is actually tactically better for min-maxing over here. Actually, we're running out of room for gameplay. I don't want to make this video too long, but um, anyways, yeah. So uh, everything will be in the POB, but uh, specifically Immortal Call, I like at level three. And it's just the way I like to play the game is just holding down one key. And it doesn't work with like the other way because it doesn't let you move with uh, the Vault Molten Shell, but it is tactically better. I, I will argue that. Um, this is just more like for like, I wanna be as fast as possible and uh, not pay too much attention to the game. Uh, but yeah, we, that's why we have Clarity. Uh, we have Ray Spectre. And as far as like the Spectres that we raise, uh, we have the Host Chieftain and Carnage Chieftain. So it's gonna grant our uh, minions as well as ourselves, Frenzy Charges as well as Power Charges. So yeah, um, these can be found uh, Old Fields Act 2 and then Act uh, 6 uh, Riverways for the Host Chieftain. Um, and then uh, next up we have, um, uh, where, what else do we have to explain? Oh wait, we have, have Frostbing, you can do Flame Dash, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then we have, in our other one, we have Ray Zombie, 
Uh, we have Meat Shield, so it can uh, taunt the enemy, so that basically helps us survive a little bit more. And then we're running uh, Feeding Frenzy. So Feeding Frenzy grants us extra, uh, it makes the minions like do more damage, uh, I believe, or it's like attack speed or something. It makes the minions a little bit better. Uh, and then I'm running Tempest Shield also here in the boot. So uh, Tempest Shield, what it does is it grants us an insane amount of a chance to block. Um, and then we're also, oh, you know what? We're shock immune anyways if you run Tempest Shield. I know early on though, you may not be able to have all the reservation maxed out uh, because you just won't have the, the items, but uh, that would be something to also consider uh, getting on as you know you get farther in there. So you're immune. To sh you're, we're basically completely ailment immune as long as yeah, because we're immune to frozen, immune to ignite, and then shock. So pretty much ailment immune to those ones at least. And then uh, after that, uh, I think we pretty much covered it. Oh, we have skitter bots, which I already mentioned. This is like kind of optional early on though. I do like it a lot uh, because you get skitter bots relatively quick in the game. But I think oh no, flasks. Okay, hold on, I can't forget that. So as far as our flasks go, uh, we're running. All of them used when charges reach full because I'm lazy. This is like a full lazy build. Um, and then it, with the exception of Forbidden Taste. So this is something I, I've talked about. And I love it every, every every single time. I always recommend people to get this if you feel like you're dying too hard. So Forbidden Taste, what it does is uh, the, there's a chance to suppress uh, spell damage. and There's also phasing, but it doesn't really matter. I have it used when you take a savage hit. Uh, and then what it does is it recovers 100% life on use. Now, you don't want this early on in the league because you may not reach the Chaos Res. Once you're Chaos Res cap, this thing is a lifesaver. So what it does is whenever you take a Savage hit in the game, can I hold Alt over here? Oh, it doesn't work like that. So I think it's like 10 or 15% of like your HP in damage, right? It's gonna automatically activate it, which heals for 100% of our life. So whenever we take something that's a big damage, as long as we can technically take the damage, it will heal us all the way up. But then what happens is it starts draining our life. But since we have enough Chaos Res, it really doesn't matter. We have the life recoup. It's totally fine. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, but you want to make sure you, you are Chaos Res uh, uh, capped when you, if you want to use this. But this is something I play with every, every single league and is one of the best uh, setups I've ever had. Um, and it's, it's great. Uh, next up, we have a Jade Flash just for some evasion. It gives us extra armor on use. Um, and then we're running a Rumi's Concoction, so that's more block. We are, I think, like 1% off, I think, on one of the blocks. You can get, technically, I can get a Jewel that gives us like 1% uh, like spell block. Um, and then we'll be capped out on that as well. But it's like 74, 75 is basically our block chance at the end of the day uh, at the moment uh, for the gameplay. But yeah, our Rumi's Concoction is great for that. It also grants us extra armor. Then we have a Quicksilver Flask to move a little bit faster and gives us extra armor. Um, this one can technically be dropped. It's just, I just like had an extra slot and I just want something on auto cast. I do happen to have a Bottle of Faith, but like I didn't want to use it for the gameplay because Bottle of Faith is literally so expensive. And I, I try to show you guys gear that's like realistic to get. Like the only thing that's really expensive in this entire build um yeah the only thing that's actually going to cost you anything is a six link flesh crafter or you, you could just technically run a five link if you want to earlier on um but like this is the only thing that would be expensive it's like the six link and then also the the wand now i, I know i do have to have like awakened minion damage support but that's like not required and only gives us a little bit more at damage at the end of the day but like the wand can be like uh, it, the wand's usually about 2x the flesh crafter can be about 1.5 it depends like you know at the time of the league uh but you or you can just you know just use your fusers on that but i think that pretty much covers everything Thing in terms of like the build i mentioned like kind of how you play and uh, it's a great build i mean i genuinely think it's one of the best builds for a league starter but if there's anything that you guys want to know about uh that you feel like i maybe missed out on definitely let me know in the comment section below but if this is your first time playing path of exile and you're thinking about like what do i want to play i still recommend this build so much because it is so powerful compared to every single other build uh, as far as a league starter it's cheap it's easy and it's fast uh for the most part like you could basically play item collection simulator like all like I'm not I know I'm not picking up items here But all I'm doing is just summoning my uh, skeletons and I'm just kind of walking by letting everything die And then when the boss happens you activate your vol summon skeleton um, the, the, All this again is on the newest patch. Uh, I just came out uh, not too long ago And we're all obviously on standard for it, but like there's no changes which is excellent So I have the build ready for you guys, but uh, like I said if you guys do want the um, the, the passive tree actually hold, oh, oh one more thing hold on one thing before i actually say like thanks for tuning in guys animate guardian what i'm using for my animate guardian in the gameplay is leer cast as a super treat grothels was like i think 
10 or 20 C. It's just so that it can regenerate life. You can get ambush charge instead though. Um, you can get southbound. This is just for life. It doesn't really matter. The rest of the stats really don't matter. Vitaris flight just for increased movement speed. And then Kingmaker, Kingmaker is something that you're going to have to get a little bit later on. It was like 35 chaos orbs. Um, I don't know what it was like at this moment, but like that's about what it was. Uh, however, you can also just get, uh, was it Dying Light? It's a stat that just gives you extra damage. Um, so yeah, I already mentioned that. I just want to make sure I didn't forget anything. So yeah, it's a pretty cheap build. Everything is really cheap uh, with the exception of, again, the Six Link Flesh Crafter as well as the uh, wand. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. And give me some feedback because this is my first time doing a build guide like this where I just have a gameplay rolling in the whole time versus like opening up POB because I think this is a little bit more visually pleasing to look at. Uh, but anyways, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like on it. If you're new here and do want to see more, Path of Exile content in the future, uh, and this is your first time here, hit subscribe, turn the bell, and definitely check out the pinned comment uh, if you are brand new to Path of Exile. We'll have a full like walkthrough guide, but take care. I'll see you guys in the next video, and good luck on your league start. Peace.